Welcome, and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 Radio Program. I'm Daniel Davis. On the program today, we're going to learn a marvelous story about a nutrition system that is based on blood sugar stabilization. It was after, at the age of 8 in 2008, that our guest's son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and that our guest's world had turned upside down. She then became acquainted with Mark McDonald, who is the creator of what is known as excuse me, Venice Nutrition, that is a complete and comprehensive nutrition system based on blood sugar stabilization. She has been able to help not only her son, but others to lose weight, gain energy, reduce cravings, improve sleep, and learn how to live a life of bliss. We're going to discover what this is today as we're joined with Sherry McCants on Venice Nutrition. Sherry, thank you for joining us here on the program today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm uh, very excited to be on. Well, nothing like a little excitement when you're doing something you love. Tell us about yourself and how all this got started. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, when Reed, my son, was diagnosed at the age of eight with um, type 1 diabetes, you know, you go into the doctor. Um, he had been, you know, doing a lot of, uh, um, he was very, very thirsty. He was um, also losing a lot of weight at the age of eight. And, you know, we thought he was just a normal kid playing soccer and always thirsty. We didn't really think much of it. But um, thank goodness for great school teachers because one of the school teachers called and just said, hey, just wanted to let you know your son is, he tends to leave a lot at, from school and needs to go to the bathroom. So I set up an appointment the next day thinking maybe it was just like a UTI and found out his blood sugars were 568. And when that happened, immediately that is type 1 diabetes. And like you said, my world was turned upside down, mine and my family's. And I didn't understand diabetes. I mean, I had heard of it, heard of type 2, really didn't understand type 1. And so I was looking for answers. And what happened is I was introduced to a gentleman named Mark McDonald that teaches blood sugar. And that's what he's done all of his life. So I became very interested in it. And to be honest, Daniel, I really did this for myself just to understand what blood sugar was. And as I went through the program, I just realized that this is not a program for just type 1 or type 2. It's really for everyone. This is the way our body is meant to be fed. And I decided to share my passion with uh, really anyone that would listen. <laughs> because well, of I really course. Think it, mm-hmm. really think it makes a difference. Mm-hmm. So now tell us about this particular system. You say that it deals with blood sugar stabilization. What exactly is that? So when your blood sugar is stabilized, you have to think of, um, obviously, when I was working with Reed, what he has to do before he, before he eats anything, he has to check his blood sugars. And a normal range of blood sugar is between 80 and 120. And like I said before, when he went to the doctor, he was 568. So obviously we know that is a very, very high blood sugar. And when, you, when your body is, has the blood sugar between 80 and 120, that is blood sugar stabilization. And that is a, a state of called homeostasis. And that's where you will live your best life. You won't have sugar cravings. You will burn fat. And you will feel your best. And that's what blood sugar stabilization is. When your, body, when your body's blood sugar level is below 80, you're actually burning muscle. Or when you skip a meal, you're burning muscle. There's so many people that exercise on an empty stomach. They get up in the morning, the first thing they do is exercise. Well, they aren't doing their body any good because they are burning muscle at that time. Then... They go to their next meal, they're, they're starving, so most of the time they overeat, and then they're storing fat. So we're basically living in this world where we're either burning muscle or we're storing fat. So what I do is I teach a person how to stabilize their blood sugar um, by eating in threes. That means they eat uh, every three hours a balance of protein, fat, and carbs. 
And when they do that, they stabilize blood sugar. Now, do they do it in that order, or are there a particular way that you go a battery, just kind of mix and match it as long as you're doing it every three hours? That's a great question, Daniel. Actually, if you will eat your protein first, your good fat second, and your carbohydrates last, it actually works much better. However, when you're having a salad with some chicken on it and some you know, almonds on the salad with it, you know, you are eating it together, so that's fine too. Um, but having the protein first, fat second, and carbohydrates are great because the protein is actually digested in the stomach. Your fat will um, slow the digestion, and then your carbohydrates are, um, they're already broken down in your mouth. So if you start eating your carbohydrates first, it can spike your blood sugar. And that brings me to a point where a lot of people will, you know, have an apple for a snack or a banana for a snack, and it's a great snack. However, if they just have that, that's a carbohydrate, they're going to digest it, and it will turn to sugar because it's just a carbohydrate. If they would pair that with a protein and with a little fat, then they'll stabilize blood sugar. So you can see that there is a difference between blood sugar stabilization and, let's say, calorie and carbohydrate restriction. Absolutely. Uh, calorie restriction is when people, you know, they reduce their calories, they reduce their carbohydrates, and what happens is they actually lower their metabolism. And what this program does is it actually reprograms your metabolism so that you will burn fat all day long and in essence, um, either lose weight or your sugar cravings, you won't have those any longer because then your blood sugar is stable. Now, does this seem to be something that, you know, and I stretch by asking this question, a one-size-fits-all, or is there, let's say, a blood sugar chart where people can come to understand where they kind of need to be? This is actually a one-size-fits-all. We say... This program is not for um, anyone. It's for everyone. So we think about it like this. When we were a baby, we were fed either breast milk or, or milk in the, in, as a formula, and that milk was a perfect combination of protein, fat, and carbs. So we are same thing. Just think of it as um, eating like a baby, and we call it PFC protein, fat, carb, every three, like a baby. That's kind of a way to think about it. Oh, okay. That sounds pretty reasonable. That's for, uh, you know. Now, uh, I'm kind of interested now. Is this a plan? Uh, you, I, I know you said it's for everyone, but uh, is it this, so this is good for type 1, type 2 diabetes, pretty much any type it sounds like. Yeah, it really is. Um, everyone is looking for answers not just type 1 or type 2. People are looking to lose weight. People are wanting to burn fat. They just have to know the secret. And the secret is balancing your blood sugars. It's not about calorie deprivation or uh, carbohydrate deprivation. I mean, when is depriving yourself any good? And the other thing is, is would you feed your kids like you are doing? If you are reducing your calories and reducing your carbohydrates, would you do that with your kids? And the answer is probably no. You want to feed them so that they can go on with their day. It's just everyone's the same. It's, they have to think of it like a car. When you drive a car, if you don't put gas in your car, it's not going to go anywhere. Well, our body is a refuel as it goes machine. And if you do not feed it, it will not perform as well as it could. So if you stabilize your blood sugar, eat every three hours, a little bit of protein, fat, and carbs, because our body can only digest so much in so much time. So the um, myth of eating three big meals in a day is not how we're meant to be fed. I remember years ago as I was studying Eastern philosophy, the idea behind eating was that you eat when you're hungry and only eat enough to where you feel comfortable. 
And I kind of wondered, who was the person that came up with the idea that you eat three meals a day in the first place? Uh, well, what's that all about? You know, because when you think about humanity, you know, in its beginnings, they didn't eat that way. You know, they got hungry. They were out looking for something to eat, but they were also always on the move as well, you know, which, you know, uh, you were alluding to earlier that exercising on an empty stomach may not be such a great thing because you're kind of depriving your body, you know, of what it needs to be able to have the energy to do so. Yeah, actually, and and when you bring that up about, you know, before people would just eat a small amount, that's what happens. When you start eating this way, you start learning what to eat, um, good proteins, good fats, and good carbs, and we can get into that just a little bit later. But that's what happens is you eat, and then in a couple hours you're like, oh, I'm hungry again. And so you eat, and then a few more hours you're hungry again. And that's exactly what happens. You eat when you're hungry but not starving. And you want to be ready to eat you know, your food. And then when you're finished, you, you don't want to be indulged. You just want to be satisfied. And that's a really big key to the program. Now, what did you like about it uh, for you? What were some of the experiences that you had as you began going in this direction with your, uh, I guess, diet choice? Yeah, um, well, I've, I've kind of always been a yo-yo dieter. I didn't really understand blood sugar at all. So I was probably like everyone else, you know, cut my carbs, cut my calories, increase my exercise. Sure, I would lose weight, but I could never maintain it. And so when I learned about this and started implementing it with me and my family and my son especially with type 1, it just made such a difference. I mean, his blood sugar levels were so much better. He wasn't using as much insulin, and that is a really big deal. Um, and, you know, we just felt better. We felt better understanding some of the foods that really aren't designed for our body. There's a lot of um, chemicals out there. There's a lot of artificial sweeteners out there. And it, it was all about education. You know, now I read labels and understand what we're putting in our mouths. So I believe that's, you know, kind of what was all exciting for me. And then when I shared it with a few people and they saw results, losing 25, 40 pounds, and maybe even getting off of a, you know, blood pressure medication or something like that just because they're stabilizing blood sugar. Now, tell us, is this uh, plan based on science and physiology, or, or tell us more about that? Yes, it is. It's based on science and physiology. So you're just going to eat um, a good protein, and a protein is um, you know, chicken, egg white, turkey, you know, beef, pork, um, any, any good protein, and then a good Fat is nuts, avocados, olive oil, things like that. And I have to bring up this part. Most people think nuts are a protein. And a lot of people will say, I had a you know, peanut butter with something. Well, peanut butter is actually a fat. So you still need to pair that with a protein. Because it doesn't have all the essential amino acids that it takes to be a complete protein. And in order to stabilize blood sugar, you need to have a complete protein. And then the carbs are your fruits and your vegetables. So you have just a little of each one, and that will stabilize blood sugar. Ah, oh, very, very good. Seems reasonable enough. Now, what about exercise? Yes, exercise fits in wonderfully. <laughs> I love to exercise. Um, just... People are in the gym maybe, you know, two, three hours. You don't need to be. You can be in that, the gym an hour or um, you can mix it up during the week. The, the main thing is you want to do your strength training um, first. You will burn your sugar up. And then you want to follow by like a fat burning exercise uh -huh. like walking or um, maybe on the elliptical, but not anything that is uh, raising up your heart rate. Uh, when you're doing the fat burning. Or you can start with a high-intensity 
start with that and then continue with your fat burning. And an hour in the gym is, is plenty. You don't need to do three hours. It really isn't, doesn't really do you any good. So now tell us, uh, how does a person go about measuring their blood sugar so they, you know, take the next obvious steps from that point? Well, if someone is a type 1, type 2, obviously they usually have the um, implements to do that. When I teach someone, uh, I just explain how to do the program and show them what um, foods to eat and what portions. And what happens is they, they will feel it. Because they're not craving sugar and because they're, you know, they're feeling their best, they'll realize that their blood sugar is stable. But really the only way to check their blood sugars is um, you know, through a blood sugar meter. So now, do you consider this plan to be pretty easy? I mean, you obviously consider that the plan's worth it. Absolutely. You know, it's a good question. It's simple. It's a very simple plan. But I'm going to, I, I want to tell other people, it's, it's maybe not the easiest plan, but it, what in life is easy? Is it worth it? Yes. What it takes is um, a lot of preparation so that you are familiar with what you're going to eat that day, and that will really help. It's, it's really all about the preparation, and then it, it gets to be real easy, but it's very simple, which is uh -huh. nice. Now, um, but there's a lot of debate sometimes, and, and to me it makes a lot of sense when you consider whether or not you should eat before you go to bed. My attitude about that is, well, I don't think you should because the last thing you want to do when your body is going to lay down to go to rest is put it to work digesting food. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm really glad you brought that up. So the plan is we eat every three hours, actually until we go to bed, and it's within an hour of going to bed. And the reason is because if you eat a combination, again, before you go to bed, even a half a, half a meal is what we call it, of a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat, a little bit of carb, you actually will stabilize your blood sugar during the night so that when you wake up, you are hungry, which means that you've burned fat during the night, and you're ready to get that metabolism going again. So you can actually eat within an hour of going to bed. Oh, okay. Well, because you're not really eating heavy, too, which is another good thing. Right. Okay. Okay, very good. Now, uh, you know, how important do you consider sleep to be when it comes to losing weight? It's very important. It's a great... Uh, think of it like your cell phone. If at night you... Uh, put your cell phone um, on the charger and maybe um, didn't plug it in, um, the next day, how would your cell phone work? If it wasn't charged, it probably right. wouldn't work very well. So it's the same way with sleep. We really need sleep. And if we get good sleep, we actually metabolize our food better. So sleep is very important. Well, I, not only that, it just feels good too, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, absolutely. Now, how about when you wake up in the morning? How soon should you eat on this plan uh, when you wake up? So you should eat within an hour of waking up. Let's wake up that metabolism. Think about this. You have basically fasted, and that's why when you wake up, it's called brick breakfast. You're breaking that fast. So within an hour of Waking up, you want to put protein, fat, and carbs, all three, in your body, and you'll be ready to go for the day, and you'll start that metabolism. Okay. Uh, just, you know, this, it's so fascinating when you think of all the diets that are out there, and you kind of get pushed and pulled in every direction. You get confused about what you need or what the best way to go is, and you can see how this has more of a direct approach about balancing uh, blood sugar. Uh, Obviously, also when it comes to losing weight and getting your body back into balance, detoxing it should be one of those things that should be considered. So tell our listeners what detoxing is and how often they should do it. Okay. 
detoxing, again, let's think of it with like a car. You know, how often does our car need an oil change? Maybe like four times a year, something like that. That's about how often our body needs to detox. And what that means is we are basically all living, going around uh, with some extra bloat. And what detoxing will do is remove that bloat. And we're going to um, cut, you know, cut some foods that will bloat you. And some of those foods are gluten and soy, dairy, um, sugar, uh, refined sugar, um, alcohol, even coffee. You know, we want to just get get rid of all that that will bloat you. And actually, even during detox, we take out exercise because exercise does cause inflammation. And we just detox for a week. If someone wants to lose uh, 50 pounds or less, we just have them detox for a week. If they want to lose 50 pounds or more, we detox for two weeks. So one week, and that will keep things cleaned up and get you to lose weight. That sounds like a pretty even trade there. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Now, how about water? Obviously, water is pretty important. Water is very important. We really need to consume enough water. And for, um, for a woman, we need to consume 8 to 12 eight ounce glasses of water a day. And for gentlemen, they need to consume 12 to 16 eight ounce glasses a day. And that will flush your system. And you want to do that on a daily basis. It really is a big difference in weight loss and how you feel. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it's interesting because, uh, you know, you brought up yo-yo dieting earlier. What exactly is that? Well, yo-yo dieting is when you first just you cut your calories, you cut your carbohydrates, and then that makes you lose weight kind of what I was telling you before, uh, something I, I did prior. Well, what happens is your blood sugar drops, so the hormone glucagon is released, and your body burns muscle. Then you get hungry, your cravings begin, and then you overeat, you re reintroduce carbohydrates, then the hormone insulin is released, and your blood sugar spikes. Then your weight and body fat increases, and it's just a complete circle. Well, you see people, they start off with their New Year's Eve resolutions, you know, and they gun for it, and they lose 5, 10, maybe 15 pounds. The next thing you know, they're back to where they were before. What do you think causes that? Lack of education. I really do. <laughs> I, I really do. I mean, I, I've seen this, and I even work with a lot of medical staff and, you know, doctors and nurses are the first ones to tell us that they don't get education in nutrition. And I, I have a lot of nurses that I work with, and they're just like, this just makes so much sense. This is based on physiology. This is based on science. This is the way our body's meant to be fed. And the people that follow the plan and continue to follow the plan, which you can follow it for the rest of your life, can maintain. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to yo-yo diet. Now, how can people find out more about this? Is there a website that you have that people can go to and discover how they can, you know, get started and what they need to do? Sure, Daniel. My website is team. It's at t e a m and dash. Then it's a dash, and then it's bliss. It's b l I -S -S dot com. And what BLISS stands for is Balanced Living Instability with Support. That S can also be Sherry. However, I, just, I like the word BLISS because I think with life we need a balance. We need a balance of good food. We need a balance of exercise. We need a balance of family and friends. And I just think that helps with me to understand balance. And team, I just love working with people. 
and I feel that together everyone achieves more. So I really like a community, and with this program, what happens is we visit with someone, and they'll ask another friend to help them. And and when you have a friend, uh, when you have myself and, and other friends accountable to each other, everyone wins. I agree. Nothing like a little accountability in your corner to keep you on track with your goals. There's no doubt about that. That's correct. Well, Sherry, I want to thank you for taking the time to be on the program today to share the Venice Nutrition System. It sounds uh, pretty exciting, and again, uh, you know, this is good for everyone, as you said. And if you could, one more time, give out your website for our listeners. Yes, absolutely. It's team, so team, T-E-A-M, and then dash, bliss, B-L-I-S-S, dot com. Team dash bliss dot com and would love to have anyone go to it. Um, I have six fat-burning recipes that someone can download for free. And also I have an e-book that they can get that's Why Dieting Fails, mm -hmm. so they can understand blood sugar. Well, very good, Sherry. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. Thank you, Daniel. You bet. Mm -hmm. We want to thank you, the listeners out there, for tuning in, discovering a new diet that works well for everyone. So go and find out more about that uh, by visiting the website that was given earlier there, which is teambliss.com. That's how you can find out more about it and contact Sherry McCants there. You can also discover more by visiting us at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. We encourage you to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter and stay up to date with what's going on on the Beyond 50 radio program as well as upcoming shows. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 radio program. And remember, live your day path halfway.